Well, we are a beautiful Sunday morning. I got my co-pilot with me today. She is uh, ready to hit the water and see if we can't find uh, some trout. Uh, the weather's been beautiful here in Maupin. Here's a quick shot of the canyon. Then my uh, rod holder is doing a, a great job carrying two rods. I did a video on how to carry your own or how to make your own fly rod holder or you can use it as a traditional rod holder as well. Here's a shot of it from inside the cab. Carrying two pin rods, no problem. So I drove down to Sandy Beach just to kind of check out uh, the water below white and uh, it's looking pretty good, definitely fishable. Um, I was kind of clowning around while Kali was running around sniffing and first cast into that little pool right there at the boat launch and I caught a nice uh, red band. Uh, nothing of any size and of course the camera was in the car so I didn't get it on footage. But I'm gonna go up river just a little bit closer to town and uh, actually get rigged up with some waders and whatnot and do a little fishing here for a couple hours this morning. Uh, before it warms up too much. Uh, we have a really nice spell of weather right now. It's mid 60s, Monday, Tuesday, supposed to be in the 70s. So pretty awesome uh, for March. I'm not gonna complain about that. We'll see what the fishing is like. Sometimes these real sunny, clear days, uh, the fishing cannot be the best. Um, but I don't know, I got one at that little pool, just the first cast, just kind of killing time, letting Kelly wander around and got a fish on so that kind of makes me excited for some of the other spots where i am actually fishing not just killing time so i'm gonna head on up the road and uh find a spot to try out and i'll jump back on here in a bit I'm at the first spot today. I'm gonna to be fishing up just up from uh, Blue Hole uh, Campground. Uh, I think it's popular, it's a spot that's commonly called Moss Hole. I had never really fish here, but uh, since I got Cali with me, I always look for places that have good banks that are pretty sur uh, safe for her to uh, be hanging out on so she doesn't get on the road because people sometimes unfortunately drive way too fast on the access road. Uh, and obviously don't want her to get a hit. Um, so the spot I'm fishing is between uh, Blue Hole and below Gray Eagle Day Use. So it's kind of in between on that section of river. So we'll see what I, I'm gonna get geared up and uh, see what I can find down there. Uh, here's a quick overview of the rod I'm using today. I'm using a different rod. Uh, the last video I did, I did a review on that Blood Run three weight paired with a, a Raven Matrix. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the rod. So today I've got my daily driver out. Uh, it's, a, it's a full Raven setup. It's their Raven Helix rod. Uh, it's a 12.6 rod, so a little bit longer and just a smidgen heavier than what I was using with that uh, three weight. Uh, I was definitely not a fan of that three weight. Uh, I'm still giving it a shot. I have it on the truck today to give it an, another honest shakedown and whether or not I like it or not. Uh, the specs on this is a four to 10 pound rod, uh, one eighth to three eighths ounce. Um, here's a quick, and it's paired with the Raven Helix reel, eight pound main, and then I dropped down to, I think a six pound uh, floral carbon. Uh, here's a shot of the reel and the rod. Here's the backside of the reel, it's pretty snazzy. It's a very pretty rod. It's got kind of a, a blue finish to it. Um, there's no reel seat, um, so you have to come up with a way of attaching your own reel, whatever reel you decide to go with, a center pin or a uh, traditional spinning reel. And the flies I'm using are a couple junk ones that I came up with. I'll show you a shot now. And then 
Then the tag got an egg pattern up on top. Um, running three flies. I don't always do that. Just occasionally I'll do that. Um, so yeah, I'll get geared up and get on the river. All right, so approaching this spot here, I'm gonna work up above, up into those trees there. Definitely, I wanna fish these shadows. And then this time of year with the water still being up, lots of times the fish will move to the shoulders and into the softer water. Where in the summer you tend to find the red bands in a much swifter water because that swift water is cooler. Um, and so they tend to go there just for comfort because they're not comfortable. And uh, so it's especially important because the fish can be moved up to the shoulder of the rivers to not walk right up to the edge of the river. You want to kind of stay back from where you want to, you know, fish or, or send a float to whatever you're doing. Um, that way you don't uh, scare them off the shoulder of the river, you know, because like right in there, I, I would expect there's probably some fish land, especially down there in the shadow. Um, so you don't want to just walk up right to the bank of the river. You want to kind of be a little more stealthy, stay back, uh, and kind of plan where you're going to fish a little better. Um, so just try not to be too big of an e eager beaver. So I'm going to go ahead and, and step in about right here, uh, and then work my way back down to the truck. The truck's about 50, 60 yards down river for me. Uh, I walked up from the truck. This looks like a, a pretty good gentle area that I think, uh, we can find a fish uh, hanging out. I'm gonna try to be a little stealthy here and uh, I'm more focusing on the water below me so much as the water right out in front because it's kind of sandy here. Um, but I am gonna get into the water here and, and, and then start setting up drifts down river from me to get into that those sl slower slots and whatnot. So hopefully we can uh, find a nice size red band today. So I did a couple casts and it's time to do a float adjustment and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, so here's the float. So I, I wasn't sure of the depth here, so I left my setup kind of long. And the float is doing one of these as it's going down river. And what's that, what that, that means is I'm too deep and I need to shorten up uh, my, my setup to not stop hitting the bottom. That means that I'm dragging on the bottom and that's what we don't want. So I'm gonna do a float adjustment here. Uh, try to get it up off the bottom about six inches and then uh, We'll send it back through this section of the water and see if we can't find something. action yet but I, I did come across something that really really upsets me along the lower the shoots you know I, I fishing's fishing to me I, I don't get all weird and elitist if you don't center pen or if you don't fly fish or whatever but the one thing that really pisses me off pardon my language is this so we got a bunch of a-holes that are fishing in a section of the lower to shoots that is not a bait section there's only one bait section and not only are they bait fishing with worms but then the pieces of garbage are leaving their trash behind for others to pick up or for it to get washed in the river which is even worse you know so we're poaching we're using the wrong bait leaving our trash behind you know if you're going to do that stay home or go to portland and leave your trash on the city streets you know, just don't leave it on the banks of the dang river. It's just so inappropriate and pretty much is just saying, hey, I'm a scumbag piece of crap and I'm going to leave my trash wherever. Rules don't apply to me and I'm going to do what I want. You know, if you're going to have that behavior, then just don't come out to these wild and scenic areas. You know, leave your styrofoam and crap in the cities and stay there and Facebook and play video games on your cell phone. We don't want you on the river. You know, sorry, that's a little bit of a tangent, but it just gets me going when I stumble upon this kind of stuff. You know, you're doing something illegal and then you go and leave your trash behind. You know, it's just, you're scumbag, get off the river. Okay, you're welcome, Mr. Scumbag. 
I picked up your trash and I'm gonna stop what I'm doing with my free time and walk your trash up to my truck and throw it in there and put it in a proper trash bin. And if you've been to the Deschutes, there's, it's not difficult to find a trash in the campgrounds and different day uses, you know? So I'll stop what I'm doing, Mr. Scumbag, and uh, pick up after you. Well, now that I finished picking up after Mr. Uh, Low Life, we're gonna go ahead and head back down to the bank. I'm gonna finish out this run. It's been a pretty slow little run here. If I don't end up getting anything, I am going to uh, move to a different style of water up river from me and see if I can't find some fish there. So we'll find them. You know, they're just being uh, a little sneakier today on these uh, very clear sunny days. Let's see what it is. It might just be a big sucker fish. He hasn't made any jumps or anything yet. Oh, there he goes. Made a little run. Let's see what we have. He's swimming right at me. Oh, nice, nice uh, trout. Wow, he's that trout way ahead. Oh, well, that's a nice fish. Well, he's not done yet. All right. Oh, that's a nice fish. All right, yeah. Beautiful fish. Check him out. Woo, there he goes. He was tired of being held. Nice fish, and he decided to eat one of my whoop, one of my BS flies. Let's see if I can uh, get it up here to show you without hooking myself in the face with it, or snagging up my line, which I kind of snagged it up. But here we go. He decided to eat that guy. Just a little flash on it, a little flashy body, black bead, size 16. He ate that. He was sitting in some pretty calm water, just kind of down there about 25 yards from me and about 20 feet off, right in that riffle, kind of out straight across. So awesome. That makes two for today, so that's not too bad. I haven't fished very much so far. Uh, and that was a very nice fish, so that's awesome. He's, he's fighting pretty furious for a little guy. Get him in. All right, buddy. Oh, barely had him hooked. Another nice little, pretty little fish. And there he goes. That came right after uh, a depth adjustment. So that just kind of shows you I had been hitting that spot, sending the float through it, sending the float through it, and I was like, I know there's more fish there. Uh, I did about an eight inch float adjustment, getting a little deeper, and first uh, drift through that hole after the float adjustment, I picked up that little fish. So that just shows you the importance of working depth, working shallow to deep, uh, and, and thoroughly fishing wherever you're at. Well, that's a wrap for today's fishing outing. Went out for a couple of hours, caught, uh, I don't know, three or four. Uh, just one of any kind of size. Uh, I got that one on, on camera, luckily. The other one, not all of the other ones I got on camera. So, uh, all in all, it was a nice little outing. You know, it was a little slow, but these little clear sunny days can be a little iffy sometimes. Uh, I figured it was a pretty successful trip. I wasn't down very long. And uh, Kelly got her fill of the river. But uh, rod holder's working great. There's another shot of it. And it is an absolute beautiful day. So if you're looking for somewhere to fish, 
I would head to the lower D and give it a shot. The weather is amazing. Uh, the next three or four days are looking pretty great too. Here's a shot of the canyon. And uh, like always, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, check out our eBay store. Uh, I just brought in $600 worth of uh, additional items that will be available here probably Tuesday on the eBay store. It gives me some a couple days to get it all listed. And then they'll also be available if you happen to actually come to Moppin. Swing by the hardware store, Moppin Country Store and Hardware. Check out our fishing department and of course the, the new items will be available uh, in the brick and mortar store. So tight lines until next time. Uh, get on the river somewhere.